Hi guys, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make this medieval square blanket. So what you're going to need for this project are two different colors, one to use in the middle and then each square will have a border and then there'll be an, another border when you start to sew them together. Also, there's going to be a border on the very outside as well, which I, I used all three of those borders. I used the off-white. So you want to colors, different colors that you want to use for the center of your square, or you can just go white like I did this one. Also looks beautiful, and all the borders just mix right along with it. Um, so it's, it's an option. Also, you're going to need some uh, marker. Marker is very important for this square and a five millimeter hook or a size H hook for the US. The yarn is worsted weight yarn, which is four ply for the US, 10 ply for Australia. Uh, I have a flower that uh, is our, this flower here is my crochet rose and you can find the tutorial and pattern already on my site. I will show you how to attach it. I'll also show you how to attach the squares and to do the border on the outside as well. So I'll show you how to do everything. This little piece was so pretty, this little demonstration piece that I decided I would use it on my table. So I went ahead and made a couple of coasters here that I keep on, my, on the white spot here. And uh, I think it's cool. It really looks beautiful. I'll, sh I'll make sure I share pictures of that with you guys. Okay, so I wanna tell you about the size of this stuff. So each, each square without the, the sewing border and the border that goes all around the afghan, just the granny square and the first border of the square will be uh, it's 20 centimeters or 8 inches in width and in length and uh, the border around the whole blanket will add another inch or 2.5 centimeters uh, and also I was using full skeins like this and I think I could get like four four of just the color sections with just one skein, maybe even more, depending on uh, how you crochet. But if uh, you're looking for uh, how much yarn to get for different sizes, I can only tell you about per square how much I got. I think I got about four per uh, skein. Uh, I think I said about five, about five squares per skein, something like that. And I have all the, the sizes like how many squares you're going to need and width wise and length wise to make a baby size, a throw, a twin, a twin, queen size or king size. And these are just estimated going off the size of the square and how big you're supposed to make like a king size. So it's all guess though, but I have it up there to uh, going by the measurements if you want to make any size that you want. By the way, the idea for this square came from the butterfly net shawl. I thought it was so beautiful the way that it, it came in the corners like this. I thought, oh, it would make a perfect, beautiful lacy square. So this is where that idea came from. So if you've made the butterfly net shawl, then this should be really simple because it's going to start very similar. Okay, so create your slip knot. Let me get a little closer for you. Okay, you want to chain three. One, two, I'm sorry, chain uh, five. So chain five, go into that very first chain and create a ring. Now you want to chain four. This is a row, sorry, round one. So round one, you want to chain four and slip stitch into your ring. And you want to repeat this 10 more times until you have 11 little petals like this all the way around. So just keep chaining four and slip stitching in your ring. One, two, three, four. It's my tutorial yarn, so it's much older and well used yarn. I'm sure yours is gonna look a lot better. Three, four. And if you need to, Take a moment and slide your stitches down your chain just to give you more room if you need. Two, four, six, that's seven. 
one, two, three, four, seven, two, four, six, eight. Okay, so this is nine, two, three, it's ten, two, three, four, and this is eleven. Make sure you have eleven, two, four, six, eight. 10, 11. Okay, so once you have your 11 little petals here, we're going to move to rounds two and three, which will be similar, except uh, how you end round three will be the only difference between three and two. So for round two, you're going to chain four and you're going to slip stitch in this first petal. This first chain four petal here, you're going to slip stitch into that. And then go ahead and place a marker on that petal you just created so that you know where your beginning of your row is. There we go. Okay. Now you're going to repeat this. You're going to be chaining four this uh, round and slip stitching in the next chain four space. So chain, chain four and slip stitch in the next chain four space. Remember, we're going to do it the same for rounds two and three. So you're going to be doing a lot of chain four and slip stitching. But at the end of the round, still make sure you count and that you have 11 little petals all the way around. One, two, three. Four. Let me lift my camera up. I seem to be a little getting out of frame. Sorry about that. Two, three, four. Okay, we're getting up slowly. To the marker again. Okay, so that was my last one. Count. Counting the, the one where you have your marker in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we're, we're still on track. So that was round two. So for round three, it's going to be the same. You will chain four, slip stitch in the stitch that you have your marker in, and then you'll move your marker up. I used uh, really long markers. They're easy to get on and off, but uh, sometimes if you have a metal one or a clip or something, it's also good. So when you move, you move your marker up, that's now your first chain four of round three. And you'll continue to do what you did for round two, which is chain four, slip stitch in the next stitch. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. As you can see, it's not so perfectly straight, but it will as you continue to do the square, it will flatten out. One, two, three, four. Okay, this is the very last chain four. Now we come up to, actually this is the very last chain of the row, and this is where we start. So to end round three, it says chain five instead of four, and then uh, slip stitch into the marked beginning stitch. Okay, so this last one will be chain four is regular but now we're going to begin slash end <laughs> I guess however you want to think of it by chaining five so we're going to one two three four five and then end this by slip stitching in the beginning where our marker is so chain five and slip stitch where our marker is and now you're going to have to move this marker up to the new chain five so you know which is the first And then you want to move to round four. 
So for round four, we're gonna do like we did last two rows, except, I'm sorry, rounds. Except this time, instead of doing a chain of four, you'll be doing a chain of five. Two, three, four, five. So do a chain of five, and again, at the end of this round, you should have uh, 11 little petals. One, two, three, four, five. I'm running out of yarn, so I need to go grab that. So just go ahead and continue to do chain five until you reach your place before your marker. Okay, so I did my chain five, my last chain five, slip stitched into this stitch. Now I'm up to the marker again, and now we're going to do a chain of three. One, maybe. One, two, three, and we're going to slip that into where our marker is, and we're going to move the marker to our new chain three space. Of course, I had to choose the smallest, skinniest marker. Maybe this one will be bigger. Not by much. And it's a completely different color. Right now I have a lot of my markers tied into my shawl right now, my bigger ones. I want to film this tutorial before I forget how to do this square even. So into my shawl now. Okay. Okay, so once you place your, your marker there, you're ready for round five. So to begin round five, you want to chain two. And in your next chain five space, you're going to put four double crochets, chain one, and then four more double crochets all worked in the same one. So you're going to have a lot of, oops, yarn over once. See again, I keep wanting to do twice because I'm working on that shawl and there's a lot of triple crochets. <laughs> Sorry, I got the shawl in my mind. Okay, so I got DC4, then chain one. And then you'll want to double crochet four in the same space. And this is going to create a corner. And then just like we did before, we do a chain of two. After, we'll also do a chain of two. So we'll chain two and you'll slip stitch in that next chain five space. Now you want to chain three and also slip stitch in the next chain five space. Now we're going to come up to our corner again. So it'll be our corner with of course the chain two before it and the chain two after that a whole thing counts as the corner and then a chain three in the middle. So we did our chain three now we're ready to do our corner which again is going to be a chain two and then in the next space here we're going to work our double, four double crochets, chain one, four double crochets. So that's one, two, three, and four. Chain one, and then one, two, three, and four. Then chain two, slip stitch in the next stitch. Am I still off camera when it comes to this? So sorry, I have it so far down. So far, let me scoot it this way. Okay. Okay, and again, after you've done your corner, you'll chain three, one, two, and three, and then slip stitch in the next chain five space. Then we'll make our next corner. So chain two, and then do four double crochets. One, two, three, and four, then chain one, and again do four. Then you'll chain two and slip stitch in the next chain five space. And then you'll do your chain three again, slip stitch in the next. Then chain two and then you'll be doing your last corner space. three 
and four, then chain one, and then do your last double crochet four here. Then chain two, and you're going to slip stitch in the chain three at the beginning, and you'll move your marker to this new chain two space. And that will end round five. Now for round six, round six you're going to chain five, three, four, five, chain five and slip stitch in the chain one. It's actually uh, this one here. So you're going to be skipping past this chain two here and you're going to move on over. That's not right though. Okay, for round six, you're going to chain three and slip stitch in this chain two space. Then you're going to chain five, two, three, four, five, and you're going to slip stitch in this chain one space here in your corner. And you'll chain five again, three, four, five, and then slip stitch in the chain two space. Then chain three and slip stitch in the chain three. Chain three and slip stitch in the chain two. And then again, you're going to be working your chain five. And you'll always do your chain five to bridge over the, the four double crochets and then slip stitch in the chain one space. And you'll do the same on the other side too. So two, three, four, five, you'll always be chaining five and then you'll slip stitch into the chain two. That's always how you'll do those two at, after a single uh, corner here. And then the middle here, you'll be doing your chain three, slip stitch in the chain three. Then chain three again, slip stitch in the chain two. And then you're going to work your chain five again, like you did before in your corner. So you'll chain fives and then slip stitch in the chain one, then chain five, slip stitch in the chain two. So continue that around till you reach your, your marker again. Okay, I got my chain five, then I'm going to slip stitch in my chain two space here where I have my marker. So go ahead and take out your marker for a second. Slip stitch in that chain two, then you want to chain three slip stitch in this chain three here and then you want to place a marker in the new chain three space. Sorry if you can hear that, my kids are watching uh, YouTube in the other room. It's summer so they're trying to keep quiet while mommy's in here working. So you may hear some kid laughing. Okay so that's the end of round six. Round seven you want to, you're going to be doing your uh, corner like you did here, but you're going like the four double crochets, chain one, four double crochets, but you're going to put one, uh, four double crochets, chain one, four double crochet in this chain, then you'll chain one, and then you'll do the same, four double crochets, chain one, four double crochets. So we're going to start off like always, and we're going to chain two before starting one of those corner things, and then grab up that first chain five space here and you're going to put four double crochets. Then chain one, move that down a little bit because you're going to need some room, and then do four double crochets. And then before starting your next one in this space, Again, you'll want to chain one, and then in the next chain five space here, you'll put four double crochets. Chain one, and then four double crochets. Then 
then again like you begin here you'll end the same way by doing a chain of two and slip stitch in that next chain three then you'll chain three and slip stitch in the next chain three and then the very next stitch is our chain five so again we're going to start by chaining two and then starting our four double crochets in the corner then chain one after your four double crochets and then put four more double crochets then after that four you'll do a chain one and then move over to your chain five then again you'll put four double crochets chain one four double crochets all worked in the same chain five space and feel free when you need to just scooch over those scoot scooch whatever in the south I think we say more scooch scooch over okay so after you've done your four double crochets chain one four double crochets the second time here you'll chain two slip stitch in the next chain three and then you'll do your chain three slip stitch in your next chain three and then it'll bring you back up to your corner again so chain two and start your corner again and just repeat that all the way around till you reach your marker again okay I've come to the end of my row my sorry round seven and I just did my last little corner here and you always chain two at the end of it and you'll slip stitch in this marked stitch and I'm going to go ahead and remove that marked stitch real quick so chain two and slip stitch in that last, uh, I mean in, in the chain three. And then now you're going to move that marker up to this chain two. And then that will end round seven. So for round eight, you're going to chain three and you're going to slip stitch in this first chain two. Then you'll go in a chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and slip stitch in the chain one in between these first two sets of double crochets. Then you're going to repeat that again, chain five, slip stitch, and chain one, chain five, slip stitch, and chain one. So you'll repeat this two more times, one, two, three, four, five, chain five, slip stitch, and chain one, chain five, slip stitch, and chain one. We got one more double crochet to bridge. So again, chain five, but this time you'll be slip stitching in a chain two. Then you'll chain three, and you'll slip stitch in your chain three. Then you'll chain three, and you'll slip stitch in your chain two. Then you'll repeat again. You'll chain five, slip stitch in the chain one chain five, slip stitch in the chain one, chain five, slip stitch in the chain one, then you'll chain five and slip stitch in the chain two here. And that's how you'll cover your corners there. And then again you'll be working with chain threes here in the middle. So you're going to chain three and slip stitch in the chain three. You'll chain three, slip stitch in the chain two. And then again, you're going to be doing your chain fives. So continue that all the way around, and I'll see when you reach back up to your marker. I've reached into my row. I have my last chain five. I need to slip stitch here in my chain two. So I'm going to move this marker out of the way and slip stitch my chain five there in that chain two space. Then I'm going to chain three, and I'm going to slip stitch here in my last chain three here. And now this chain three is going to be my new marking place so now we need to change colors because this is where I usually do the border you want to slip stitch your border color into the loop you already have going for your let me get my color so you want to slip stitch your new color 
into the loop of your last color then you just pull that old color to make it tight then you can pick up a new color pull it to tighten it as well and then you can get started on using the border color and I'm not cutting my yarn because it's a the blue is tutorial yarn but to keep it from my loop from getting loose I would usually cut this and then tie those tails together and then just hide them later just make sure you leave a long enough tail that you can hide with a tapestry needle okay for round nine you'll start by not letting my loop be so loose that would be nice so you'll start by chaining five one two three four five and then you'll slip stitch so you have your one two three four these whole spaces you're going to chain five and slip stitch in the chain five chain five slip stitch in the chain five repeat until you come to your chain three space here so you're gonna keep doing your chain five slip stitch in the chain five chain five slip stitch in the chain five chain five slip stitch in the chain five three four five slip stitch in the chain five and then you're going to chain five one more time three four five and then you'll slip stitch in the chain three and then you'll chain three and slip stitch in the chain three and then now you're going to repeat again this is the beginning of the repeat one two three four five chain five slip stitch in the chain five chain five slip stitch in the chain five four five and do this two more times two three four five slip stitch in the chain five that'll bring you up to your chain three so you're going to you're going to chain five as always I mean like you were but you're going to be slip stitching in the chain three this time and then the middle section is chain three slip stitch in the chain three and then that'll bring you back up again to your repeat so again you'll be chaining five and slip stitching really easy hopefully it'll go by quick this is getting the the next it's like a prep row you can count it as Uh, chain five slip stitch in the chain three then you'll chain three slip stitch in the chain three then again you'll start your chain fives again three four five one two three four five one two three four five and then this is your last chain three again you're gonna chain five slip stitch in this last chain three and then chain three and slip stitch in the next chain three I'm gonna remove this marker for a minute okay that'll end round nine So you want to move it into this chain three here, the new chain three. Okay, so after you've placed your marker on your chain three, you're ready to start round 10. For round 10, you want to chain five and slip stitch in your chain five. Then you'll chain two and you'll work your four double crochets, chain one, four double crochets, all in the next stitch. Two, three, four, chain one. Then you'll work your next four double crochets. Three and four. Then you'll chain two 
and slip stitch in your chain five. Then you will chain five, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm just trying to follow the pattern and slip stitch in your chain five. Then you'll chain three, slip stitch in your chain three. Then again, you will chain three. And this time we're coming up to all our chain fives again. The first chain five here, you'll you'll have your chain three and you'll slip stitch in there. Then you'll do at the beginning of the repeat now, we're gonna go back where the star is on the pattern, one, two, three, four, five, where you chain five and you slip stitch in your chain five. Then you chain two and you start your corner again by doing your four double crochets. Chain one, then four double crochets, all worked in the same stitch. Then after you get your four double crochets, chain one, four double crochets, you'll chain two, slip stitch in your chain five. Then you'll chain five, slip stitch in your chain five. Then you'll chain three, slip stitch in your chain three. Then again, you'll chain three, one, two, three, and slip stitch in your first chain five. And then that'll bring you back up to the repeat again. So you'll chain two, no, you'll chain five to begin with, and slip stitch in the chain five, and then you'll chain two, and you're gonna start your corner again. So double crochet four, chain one. My, I lost my yarn here, I need to release myself some yarn so I don't have to keep pulling it up in front of your camera, in front of the camera. Okay, then once you've got your double crochet chain one, four double crochets, then you'll chain two, slip stitch in your chain five, and then you'll chain five, slip stitch in your chain five, you'll chain three, slip stitch in your chain three, then you'll chain three, slip stitch in your first chain five and then again you start from the beginning where you chain five and slip stitch into your chain five and then you'll chain two and then you'll do your corner and you'll repeat that till you get to your marker here I need to get my yarn out though so I'll see you back in a minute okay so for round 11 I'm going to chain three and slip stitch in this chain three space where a marker is. I'm gonna remove that marker, move it to the new chain three space. Then you're going to chain three and slip stitch in the chain five. Then you're going to chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and we're gonna slip stitch in this chain two. And then like always, we're going to be doing our chain five to bridge those four double crochets. So chain five, slip stitch in the chain one. And do that again, chain five. But this time you'll be slip stitching in your chain two. And then you'll chain five again and slip stitch in your chain five. Then you'll do a chain three, slip stitch in your chain three. Then you'll chain three, slip stitch in your chain three. Then you're back up to the beginning again. And again, you'll chain three, slip stitch in your chain five. Then you'll chain five and slip stitch in your chain two. Then you'll chain five, slip stitch in your chain one of your corner. I don't know how my camera got all up like that, but we'll change a little. Then again, you'll chain 
five, slip stitch in the chain two. Then chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and slip stitch in the chain five. Then again, you have your next two chain two, chain three spaces. So you're gonna chain three, slip stitch in the chain three, chain three, slip stitch in the chain three, and then now you're back at the beginning again where you chain three, whoops, the beginning where you chain three and slip stitch in your chain five. Then again, you'll chain five, slip stitch and chain two, chain five, slip stitch and chain one, then chain two, slip stitch and chain two, and then you'll continue all the way around till you reach your marker again. Okay, I've come to the end of my row. Here's my marker here. I'm gonna go ahead and chain three and slip stitch into that marked space, and then go ahead and remove my marker here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and chain one and cut my yarn. And I think I should go ahead and cut my tutorial yarn too, because I need to get rid of the beginning sometimes. Go ahead and cut, tie my two knots there too. Okay, now you've completed the border and the square. Uh, when you have gotten four of these done, then I can show you how to sew them together, which I'm gonna do that now.